Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about the web server that's a part of the server app on Lion Server. Now, for home users, you may not want to worry about hosting your own website uh, because of all of the different restraints. There's a, if you're going to do it, though, as a home user, here's a few things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, first of all, you want to keep in mind the fact of downtime. Now, a lot of times a website is critical. People are going to access that site whenever they want to, and you want to make sure that they can get through to your website. If your computer goes down, or your network goes down, or your web service goes down, your website disappears. It's not available if you're hosting it on your own website. That's something to consider. The other thing is, is a lot of ISPs will block port 80. Uh, and so therefore they don't want people hosting websites uh, from their home accounts on their residential service. They would prefer that you upgrade to a business account and so they want to charge you more to have that happen. Uh, the other thing you have to consider is whether or not you have a static IP. If you've got a dynamic IP address that changes all of the time, that's going to create some problems for you uh, on the outside world because you're going to have to continue to uh, change your IP address so people can find your website. So you want to keep that in consideration as well as you're looking at your at setting up a web server. So those are just some things to consider. Now, for home users, one thing that I wanted to show you right away, this is the web server uh, uh, setting right here. You can see it's already on. If you've gone through my other screencast, it'll already be turned on for you because when you set up Profile Manager, it turns it turns on the web server. You'll notice here I got the green dot, everything's good. And you'll notice I already have a website here right in the middle for my uh, server. And so that website basically is the wiki website, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But I want to show you this because this may be enough of a website for you to do what you want to do with your family and home. And you see this little link down here that says View Web Server Site. Let me just click that. And you'll see that it brings up this page. And so every Lion server has a web server, has its own web page uh, that's attached to your uh, server. And so uh, you can set up wikis, you can update your page, you can uh, have blogs and things. And so if you're just looking at a web page just to do for, the, for your internal family uh, to access, then you probably don't need to do anything extra. You're already set and ready to go. And probably in the next screencast, I'll talk about how you can use this and set this up so that you can run it as a family website. Site. So I wanted to show you that that's there. Now, I know there are others of you that say, well, no, I, I want to run something else. I mean, it's nice that I have this website, but I would like to run my own website. Maybe you've used iWeb or you've used uh, some other website creation tool, and you want to make that happen and set up your own website. Well, that's fine. You can do that and have this wiki website running side by side because uh, Lion Server will host multiple websites. So let me just show you what it looks like to add a, a new website. You just click the plus button right here and it will bring up this page. And what you're going to do in this page is you're going to put in whatever your domain name is. And so if you've registered a domain name like example.com, for instance, then you probably would want it to be www.example.com. Now the nice thing is the wiki that was set up would be probably under something like server.example.com or something like that. So you can have both of those running simultaneously. So when people do www, they'll go to your personal website that you're hosting. When they go to server, uh, .example.com, they're going to the wiki site. So you can have both of those at the same time. So you would just put that information in here. And what I'm going to do is just let me just take this little one away and I want you to see something here. And that's this little dot over here in the corner. Now, this dot, if it's green, means your DNS is set up that your website can be found and everything's good. If it's red, it means you may have a DNS issue. And so if you get a, a DNS issue, I'm going to show you when I talk about hosting virtual sites how you can fix uh, the DNS for your server. But if you've uh, hosted this okay, you should be good. Uh, if you do get a red dot when you're trying to put the www.example.com in there, you probably are going to want to add an alias to your existing setup. Uh, that refers to www. And so I'll show you how to do that, like I said, when we talk about virtual hosting. You'll notice here that you can put in the IP address uh, of your server. What I would do is make sure that it is uh, either any or it is the actual IP address of your server itself. Lion Server will host multiple websites using the same IP address, which is really nice. Like I said, that's called virtual hosting. And so you'll want to use uh, the same IP address. But you can put any as well and leave that alone uh, too. Uh, you'll notice it says port 80. 
if you want to make your website secure, you want uh, to have it, uh, you know, be secure, maybe so that people know that everything's good. You can put an SSL certificate. But I want to, I want to tell you something. If you use the one that we set up initially when we set up Lion Server, where it was a self-signed one, out in the real world, if anybody else hits your website, they're going to get warning messages that say, "Hey, this uh, this certificate isn't registered with any outside entity, so I don't know whether to trust it or not." So if you're going to host your own website on the outside, you're probably going to want to register a SSL certificate with some uh, domain name registrar so that all that stuff lines up and so that nobody has to worry about it. Uh, I would say though if you're just doing a home personal website just keep it at port 80 and don't worry about using an SSL certificate just leave it alone. You'll notice here that it says store files in where and it says custom sites default or other because you can store the web files wherever you want but it might be convenient to do it in the custom sites default. You'll notice this little arrow here I'm going to click it, it shows us where that folder is. And so that folder is found uh, on your hard drive in the library, server, web, data, sites, and then custom sites default. And that's where you would put your web files that you would export from, like I said, iWeb or another application. You put them in there, and that's where it would serve them from. Uh, just to look at the default website, which is the wiki we talked about earlier, here's all the HTML files and things for that website. Uh, those are found in this file folder right here. So that just shows you where those things are at so you know where to store the files when you create your website. Again, who can access it? You can say anyone or one of your profiles that you've set up, or you can customize it and say, I only want these certain people to access it. But if you're just doing a personal website, you're going to want everyone to access it. And then there's a series of things you can set up here. You have domains where, where you can say, hey, there's additional domain names that I want to go to this site. You're probably not going to have that as a home user. Uh, redirects. Maybe uh, if you on the outside you had a site that was, you know, um, you know, storage.com and you wanted it to come to example.com, then you could redirect storage.com. When people put that in, to automatically take you to example.com. And then you have aliases, right, where you say, well, if people put, you know, home.example.com, I still want it to go to www.example.com. And literally, when you click the edit here, you would just put the those uh, those uh, that information in there, type it in here where the destination should be, and it will set it up for you uh, and make that work. You have your index files, where those are and how they're configured, and you can edit those, and then allowing overrides or not. And so you just probably leave that alone. But that's what you would do to set up your own uh, website and get that running. Now, like I said, you may have this problem here with DNS if your DNS isn't set up right. So let me show you, I'm going to cancel this because I'm not going to set this up, but let me show you how you can set up your DNS and everything so that you can host multiple websites on the outside. And that's the neat thing about Lion Server. It is an industrial uh, grade application and so you can host things on the outside. So what we're going to do is go to the server admin application and you want to go to the DNS area right here. And you'll notice I have my DNS set up here. I've got a primary zone for my main qualified domain name, and I've got a machine record here for the same thing with an IP address. And that's the IP address of my server that we set up in the installation setup video that we talked about. Now, down here it shows my primary zone again. It shows my name servers, right? It's it's still the same thing. Server, let's say, .example.com, the host name, name server, server.example.com, okay? That's all set up right there. Now, what I want to do, though, for the purposes of uh, a website, sometimes if you have a DNS issue, what you need to do is you need to add an alias record here, which is a CNAME record, uh, and you would just add a CNAME record, and it would be, you know, www. Uh, whatever. Let me just show you what that looks like here. You would put the new alias here, which would be www. You know, example. Com, for instance, and then the target would be example. Com. All right, and that's how you would set that up so that it would know, hey, route anything www through the same web server. So that's if you have a problem with it. You, not, you probably won't, but sometimes you do, so that's one way you can set that up. Let me just click revert here because I don't want to do that. Now, if I had other websites I wanted to host, however, let's say I had uh, another website that was instead of example.com, it was, you know, um, you know school.com, and I had that all set up and I wanted to host a website for school.com. Here's how you would go about setting that up. The first thing you would need to do is get your DNS ready here is you want to add a primary zone. So you would click a primary zone in there. And then what I would type in here in the primary zone area would be school.com. All right, that would be my uh, primary zone. I'd put in any kind of email, maybe admin at school.com if I wanted to. But down here on the name servers, what I would do is I would add a name server, school.com. But instead of server.school.com over here, I would want to edit this 
to be what my uh, main server is. So in the case I've been talking about example.com. So that what happens is it says when school.com comes into the server, I want it to route it through my main server, which is server.example.com. See how that works? So you would set up this primary record to do this. All right. So there's your um, there's your zone record. Now under the zone record, now let me just highlight this. I would need to add an uh, a record. I need to add a machine record. And so that new machine record then would be example.com, just like everything else. And I would have the IP address of my server that I would put in there because I want it to be the same IP address because I'm routing everything through one one IP address. So I'd use the same one right here that I have for my other server.example.com. All right, so I would add that record and get that set up and have everything ready to go. Now, I have one more record that I need to add. So I come back up here to school and what I want to add now is an alias name. And I want to do the same thing I was going to do if I had a DNS problem before and that would be the www.example.com. All right, that's the alias because I want that to come through and that's for the destination of example.com, right? Because that's in the same zone that I've got up here. Oh, I'm sorry, not example. Let me fix that. I'm remembering from before it's actually school. Okay, school.com and then this would be school.com. Okay, so now if you look at that and how that's set up, I've got my domain area, I've got my machine record, and I've got my www record. Now once that is set up with that different uh, IP address and all that kind of stuff, then I go back to the server app to add that website in just like I showed you earlier uh, in, in the video here to add a website. But all of this DNS stuff needs to be set up first to be able to have that stuff happen. Let me revert so that I don't have to keep that there. And let me go back to the server app again. So basically then in here, once I've got that, I would click an add here and this would become, you know, www.school.com. Right? And then I would go through all of this, put my uh, custom sites in, the, in that folder. And then when I'm done, it adds the website and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to serve it up. And once I've done that DNS, now I reverted so it's not there, this dot would turn green and you'd be ready to go. And so what's great about this, you can do that for multiple websites. You can host them right from Lion Server because it is an industrial uh, type of software. And you could have all kinds of domain names and things that you hosted right off your server right from this area. So that's how you set that up. Now, there's only a couple more things you need to consider. The first thing is you want to make sure with your domains on the outside, like school.com, that you've gone to your domain registrar and you've pointed it back to the IP address, the public IP address of your server, right? The one that's on the router. You want to point it to that so that everybody on the outside world, if you've got split DNS, can find their way in to your server. The other thing that you want to consider is you need to make sure that you open the ports on your server. So if you've got an Airport Extreme, you would come in here and add the web service. Uh, if you've already gone through previous tutorials, that's probably already added for you. If you're using a different um, router, then you would need to open these ports to whatever your private IP address is. You want to open port 80. Uh, if you're only if you're doing that, if you have a secure SSL site, four, uh, 443 as well. But that's what that would look like to do your port mapping to get those things ready to go for your server. All right, well that that shows you how to set up uh, a website using the web server application in Lion Server, and that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.